Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen. We're talking about food facts and scare tactics that have been used to promote healthy living. Uh, I personally try not to eat anything that has monosyllable, uh, 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 multisyllabic words, whatever that word is. You know, more if I can't pronounce it, I don't want to eat it or try not to. Um, during our timeout, we were talking with Felicia Stoller, registered dietitian, exercise ph- physiologist. She's a doctor, uh, uh, has a doctorate, and um, the author of Living Skinny and Fat Genes. One of the things that we were talking about is uh, carrageenan. Carrageenan. And yeah. I guess the, the, you know, some people say it's okay. Uh, the FDA has it approved, but a lot of nutritionists say that it's not something to to eat. Well, there's one there's one group in particular that sort of wanted to demonize the ingredient, and they were sort of taking uh, a different form of that, you know that sounds similar but is not quite the same, and turn it into something really awful and and try to say that it's a rotten ingredient. But but carrageenan is actually a component that comes from red seaweed, which is naturally occurring. It's Believe it or not, in uh, Irish population, they call it red seaweed. They eat that. Oh, I mean, sorry, they call it Irish moss. They've been eating it for quite some time. It was used to help grow potatoes in areas where the soil quality wasn't very good, uh, you know, or it's really rocky. And um, what we know about it is that it's basically a plant fiber. And I've talked about fiber with you before. I mean, right. fiber is really important. Um, and what we're looking at in terms of, the, the, well, what it's used for is used to help keep um, some foods together. So it keeps it from it, separating. Which it's is a, what thic- it's a thickener. So, yeah, it's like a thickener. Uh, so, you know, again, uh, nothing wrong with that. You know, we want sometimes to have a, a particular quality in food and food manufacturers use that because, you know, we've become accustomed to it. But there are health benefits of carrageenan in terms of, what it can do. There's research looking at it, first of all, in terms of um, being an anti-inflammatory, that it may help to lower cholesterol. But the, the, but the amount... In- also looking at it, looking at it with um, reducing the amount of time that you have uh, a cold or flu. Like, who doesn't want that? Right. Well, let me ask you something. If, you know, with peanut butter, if you get a natural peanut butter, it's just peanuts and they run it through a machine and it comes out right. as peanut butter, right? Uh, right. Generally speaking, you have to stir it. You have to blend it together. Right. I wouldn't mind blending. I don't know enough about these the the ingredients that, but I just rather have the yogurt and the and the uh, bacteria, the healthy bacteria, uh, right. in the yogurt rather than right. adding stuff like a thickener. So if I have to stir it, I will. If I have fruit yeah. in my yogurt, I have to stir it up anyway. Well, so what happens is sometimes with certain fruits, like specifically acidic fruits, like a pineapple or something citrus, um, the way it reacts with the dairy is that, um, if you look at a pre-made, like a pre-flavored yogurt, right. is that it may separate because of the acid that's in there. And so that's where you use an additive like that to sort of help keep it together. Because while you don't have a problem with it, most people are used to particular types of mouthfeel consistency. You know, right. like even something like orange juice. You know, do oranges always taste the same 12 months of the year? Absolutely. No. Absolutely not. Because we're running right. out of time, I want to jump I want to jump ahead to something. And that is well, sure. sugar. I mean, if they if you, you if yeah. you put fruit in yogurt, they usually add some kind of sugar, and you and I have talked about that. Too much sugar is not good. We know that, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. All right, let's talk about oils. Um, uh, I, me- I mentioned uh, just regular vegetable oil uh, earlier. Uh, palm oil is is something that you say is a good oil to use? Yeah, well, palm oil has been um, a natural replacement for trans fats in the food supply uh, because of its stability and the way it's got a neutral flavor profile, a high smoke point. But, you know, when you look at it from a health perspective, what it has, well, first of all, it's grown sustainably in, in countries like Malaysia. But more importantly, when you look at it, it's red in color. It's got beta-carotene in it. 
It's also got something called tocotrienols, which is a very potent form of vitamin E that is neuroprotective, but the NIH is actually funding research looking at it being neuro and cardioprotective. And in countries like India, where they have a problem with blindness that is related to, you know, vitamin A deficiency, you've got something like this, like a small amount of this can actually prevent blindness. So, wow. You know, again, it gets into this whole idea of food elitism, where people want to, like, pound on their chest and talk about foods. I mean, there's been research looking at some olive oil that we buy here in the United States that it's adulterated, and it's not quite what we think it is. So, and that that's wrong. That's wrong. What about canola oil, real quick? You know, canola oil also is, uh, you know, a decent oil to have. I mean, personally, I have a variety of oils in my home. I use coconut. I use olive. I use some blended vegetable oils and seed oils because I'm looking for different flavor profiles. What about what about different. avocado oil? I, that just popped into I like my head. Too. I like that, too. Uh, I think that that's great. I've used sesame, you know, Asian food. Use a lot of sesame oil. I so, used some of uh, that the other night uh, as we were uh, uh, making... Uh, a salad dressing. I used a touch of sesame oil. We are out of time. I know I know that Felicia will be back with us. Felicia Stoller, the author of Living Skinny and Fat Jeans. We are out of time. We're going to uh, move on here at Late Night Health. We will talk to you soon, Felicia. Thank you. Join us at LateNightHealth.com. LateNightHealth.com. More coming up. Don't go away.